Welcome back to Bamberger Forestry Farm. My name's Rowan Reith. And one of the things I'm really passionate about is understanding the interaction between trees. Now, I see it as a seesaw. Rather than just think about trees competing, they also complement each other. And that seesaw balance is really important to understand. And when it tips from mutual support to one of competition, which affects tree growth and vigor, and obviously the health of the trees as well. People like to see trees as complementing each other. That happens, particularly when trees are young. They provide mutual shelter, particularly from the hot, dry winds and the elements, but they also change the soil structure, compete with the ground story, uh, suppress weeds, and that support, supports all the trees in the forest. But as the trees develop, they start competing, particularly for light, but also obviously their root systems drying out the soil as well. So what we've got here is what we call a Nelder wheel or part of a Nelder trial. And that was something that was developed by a statistician back in the early 1960s. He developed some equations to understand if we plant trees or other plants on spokes of a wheel going out, as they get wider apart, they could start looking at the interaction. So up here, I planted redwood so close together that I could touch two trees. When they're young, no competition, those trees would have sheltered and supported each other in some way. But as we move back out here, the further I move back, the further the trees get apart in these rows. And as a result, as we move out here, these trees, this facing, are about three meters by three meters apart, those trees have developed well in the past. They've had the advantage of mutual shelter, but now that mutual shelter is starting to turn into competition as their canopy tries to get larger. Some trees like this one will be left behind as their canopies are overtopped by their neighbors. That'll suppress that growth and eventually it will die in a process we call self thinning. As we move further out here, there is increasing amount of light available to individual trees but when we initially planted them, they were out in their open, just small seedlings, and they might have been stunted by that experience. But now as they're starting to just touch canopies, I imagine they're growing fairly well, plenty of light, good suppression of ground vegetation, and as a result of that, diameter growth and tree health would be quite good. As we move further out, Grass production or understory development improves. Trees start getting further apart so that their canopies now are hardly even touching. And as a result of that, they're in what we call the free growth state. They're growing as if there was no competition at all, or in fact, they're actually benefiting still from mutual shelter from the neighboring trees. So I suspect in this area here where the Redwoods at this size are about six or seven meters apart. They're growing as well as they could in diameter. There is still a bit of pasture left, although it's late summer, there's hardly anything here. As we move further out, the trees are totally isolated from each other. And as a result, they're, they're exposed to the elements and they may suffer a bit as a result of that. I actually quite like this facing out here. It may mean that I get larger branches when the trees are young, they get stunted a little bit in height growth. But if I manage those trees, we know that, that this spacing here, they'll be free growing out until the point with redwood that they're about 60 or 70 centimeters in diameter. And that's getting up to a, a useful saw log size. So we have as growers options of planting close together, planting wide apart. The advantage of close spacing when they're young is that they shelter each other, particularly on a very exposed site, strong winds, coastal areas, drying conditions, or we can plant them well apart, therefore plant less trees, but they may be stunted in their early years, despite having plenty of sun to actually grow. Possibly the best solution for most growers is to start pretty close together not so much that it's too expensive to actually plant the trees, unless you're doing direct seeding or natural regeneration. But before the competition starts affecting tree growth and vigor, you can choose to thin 
before the trees start killing each other. And in doing so, you'll be able to maintain healthy trees that are growing quite well and slowly move the stocking out this way over time. And that's largely what we do at the rest of the farm. This is a demonstration here of planting at different spacings to see what effect it has on tree growth. But in normal plantings, we would plant more than we ever expect to harvest or have in the future, and then we thin down. In mixed species planting, that allows us to manipulate the species mix depending on how they're performing. And because trees vary tremendously in their vigor genetically, and may be affected differently by birds or insects or, or drought or something, we can come in and remove trees that have suffered because you never really know which ones are going to be the ones that perform. And as a result of that, you can have a forest full of trees. The key is to understand that when we talk about competition, it's not all negative. Early years, we call it mutual shelter or mutual support, and later years, it becomes competition. Anyway, that's what the Nelda Wheel's about. I'll be talking more about how we measure competition in these forests so we can react early. But the easiest thing to do is go around and look up. If your trees are interlocking canopies, if they're conifers, they can do that. Or if they're eucalypts or have sensitive buds, they may not be able to grow in each other's space. It's not uh, social distancing. It's simply that the buds, as they rub on each other through the wind, get damaged so they can't grow in each other's area. So there's usually a gap between the canopies. If you want healthy growth, maybe leave about a metre of free space around the canopy so that it can grow into that space in the few years after you do a thinning operation in some way. So active management is understanding the dynamics of a forest. It's changing all the time, and we as managers need to run with our forest and understand those interactions, and then we choose what direction it goes, how much biodiversity we want, how much timber production do we want, have we got enough canopy or too much for shade and shelter. Understanding those balances is really the key for you to actually manage the forest the way you want to. Thank you very much.